Hey, what's up everybody? How many of you guys still use ordinary cameras such as this to take photos outside? Not many of you left, I bet. Most people nowadays prefer to use smartphones to take photos outside. Why? Well, to start with, smartphones nowadays in 2015 are pretty cheap and they have pretty acceptable image quality. One good thing about them is that they're connected to the internet so you could easily share or back up your photos without having to go through a computer. Another benefit of taking photos with your smartphone is that your images, unless you turn off this feature, but usually your images are already tagged with the location in which you shot it, meaning it's geotagged. It's pretty handy, especially for photography. I know for personal private stuff, yeah, you should strip out the metadata with the geolocation information, but normally for regular photography, it is pretty handy to have the geotag information already embedded in the image file. A long, long time ago, we had to manually put the image location uh, metadata into the file using either Photoshop or in Flickr. They have this map pin dropper thing. But nowadays with smartphones, it's pretty handy. However, if, if let's say you plan to shoot a lot of photos, but you don't want to be going out and shooting after a long, hard day shooting, then you have to manually tag it one by one in your, in your computer. What are you going to do? Now the purpose of this video is to, sh is to show you how to easily geotag photos taken with your ordinary camera, a camera without a GPS module, and a camera that's not connected to the internet at all. First, you're going to have to have a smartphone. It doesn't have to be connected to the internet, but it's better if it is, so it's easier for it to grab GPS data from this guy. So you have to install the app called GPS for a cam. It's a paid app, but it's very cheap, and I feel it's... It's very, very worth the money. It's one of the very few apps I have actually paid for. So here it is. Click on GPS for a cam in your phone and click on start a new trip. It's basically just gonna start logging the location information based on the time here. You don't have to do anything with it anymore. If you do wanna have advanced settings like power saving, ju just capture GPS data every 30 seconds, every five minutes, whatever, you could opt to toggle these, but for me, I just leave it at standard and then just turn off the phone, put it in your pocket, and get ready to go out and shoot photos. To save battery, if you know you're not going to be shooting for a while, you could always click pause. For example, when you're driving somewhere and you know you're not going to be taking out your camera to shoot, you could click pause here. And if you're ready to shoot again, click resume. It's gonna start logging the GPS information again. And once you're done with your photography for the day, click export. After you click export, GPS for a cam will export a QR code. And what you do next is you're gonna photograph this QR code. This is one of the cameras I used to take photos with earlier. Yep, these are the photos I shot earlier. So what we do is we're gonna basically use this camera to photograph the QR code exported by GPS for a cam. Focus it and shoot. We're gonna do the same thing using the other camera we used to shoot our little project. What we're going to do next is to import the QR codes we photographed using these two cameras into the computer. So we're now going to be importing the files we shot using the first card. Copy. Paste. Alright, we even pasted the photo of the QR code we shot that was generated by the GPS for a cam app on our phone. Next, we're going to be importing the photos that were captured using the other camera that we used earlier, the smaller silver Nikon camera. So let's import it, copy, paste, and let's paste it here into our fo photos folder. So these three that were imported just now are from the second memory card. So the wall that I took you guys to for the outdoor portion of our how to geotag tutorial is actually a wall that I've been returning to time and again over the past couple of years. This is how the wall looked like back in February 2013. 
This is how it looked like back in August 2013, and this is how it looked like back in September 2013. As you can see, the people who tag this have been pretty prolific. I try to go back once in a while, and if I see that there are changes, I bring my camera for my next trip. This is what it looked like back in October 2013, so as you can see, it has changed quite a bit. This part remained the same in this part. So this is what it looked like October 2013, and this is what it looked like just this year, May. This is May 2015. I did not photograph this part because it remained the same, but this part has changed quite a bit. And today, when I went back, it has changed yet again. This is what it looked like today. And this is a close-up of what's in the middle here. It says, Papa Jesus Love MCD. I'm assuming MCD is the guy who tagged this. Yep, so it has changed quite a bit indeed. So what we're going to be doing next is the actual geotagging of our photos. If you haven't done so yet, you have to go to the GPS for Cam website. This is how you spell it, GPS for Cam, and download their software. The software for the computer is free as I recall, but as I mentioned earlier, the software for your phone, whether it's an iPhone, an, an iOS device, or an Android device, it's a paid app. But it's really not that expensive for what it is. It's cheaper than a GPS module, for sure, or a GPS-enabled camera. So yeah, the mobile app is paid, but the software for your computer is free. So now that you have it, we have to find the directory where to find pictures to tag. So this is the directory that we want to tag. So let's put it here. And the directory where to put the result of the tagging. By the way, you can also use this method to look for the folder where you want to put the result of the tagging. You could also use browse and go through the directory tree. But since I already copied and pasted the directory here, and then geo. Geo is this folder that I made. It's an empty folder where I want to put all my geotagged files. Let's click go. And it says one trip has been decoded, one blah blah blah. GPS information has been added in three photos. Let's take a look. Let's click geo. Yep, there you go. There's three photos in the geotagged folder. Let's click details and look in the information it says GPS there's latitude and longitude data but if you look at the original photos we shot there is no latitude and longitude data in the details pane isn't that pretty cool now we're going to be doing the same thing for this other card we already know the directory name so let's put card 2 that's this folder and you're in the card2 folder, we're going to use the geo folder inside the card2 folder to put the results of the tagging. So let's click go. Just watch the progress bar, it's pretty fast since there are only two photos that we want to tag. And there you go, GPS information has been added in two photos. Let's click geo, geotag, right click properties, details. Take a look. GPS, latitude, longitude data. If you go to the card2 folder and you click the properties, you're not going to see any GPS or latitude or longitude and all data. So, well, now we're done tagging. Let's see if it actually tagged the correct location. What we're going to be doing next is importing the geotagged photos we shot earlier. So let's try the first three that we shot using the first card let's click import and they're now here these are the photos that we shot using the Canon and let's see if it works click map yep it's pretty right this is Aurora Boulevard that's where I said it was it's actually in a side street off of Aurora Boulevard so it's pretty good for all three photos how about the ones that were geotagged? So these are the photos that we um, shot using the DSLR, the Canon DSLR. So how about the 
three photos, the, sorry, how about the two photos that we shot using the Nikon camera? Let's import them. So these are the two, the ones that have the file names of DC, DSCN, blah, blah. Let's import them. So now they're both here, right? And let's click map. And look, both these photos are also geotagged here. How about if we try importing the photos that we just shot straight out of the camera without? So this directory, remember, it's the ones that we grabbed straight from the camera without geotagging them in GPS for a cam. So let's try to drag this in here. Let's import it. Let's drag it in here to import it. This particular one is the one we... Sh so everything in this folder is from card 2, not inside the geotag folder. So let's try to import... Well, I'll just import it one. It's going to be the same thing. So yep, this is the one we shot straight out of camera. We didn't do anything with it using the GPS for a cam app. Let's click map and take a look. There is no information. There is no geographical information for it. Where else can you use this? When you upload your geotagged photo online, the location will also show up in any geolocation metadata aware online album like Flickr or Instagram. Thanks for watching.